Hi everyone, my name is Ryan Tassada and I'm a Microbiomics Application Specialist at Zamo Research. Today we're going to talk about the differences between 16S rRNA gene sequencing and shotgun metagenomic sequencing. We're also going to discuss the pros and cons of these two sequencing methods. Now the choice between 16S and shotgun sequencing is a major decision for a microbiomic study. When I've discussed the topic with researchers, a general assumption is that the only factor in this decision is budget, but there are many more factors to consider and we'll go over these. But first, let's go over some basics. So what is 16S rRNA gene sequencing? 16S rRNA gene sequencing, or simply 16S sequencing, utilizes PCR to target and amplify portions of the gene encoding for the 16S ribosomal RNA. The gene contains nine hypervariable regions whose sequences can be unique to separate species. And by sequencing amplicons containing these regions, you can identify bacteria present in a complex community. For example, we can use a primer set whose amplicons include the V3 and V4 hypervariable regions. Amplicons from separate samples are then given molecular barcodes, pulled together, and sequenced. After sequencing, raw data is analyzed with a bioinformatics pipeline which includes trimming, error correction, and comparison to a 16S reference database. After the reads are assigned to a phylogenetic rank, a taxonomy profile can be generated. Shotgun metagenomic sequencing, on the other hand, sequences all given genomic DNA from a sample. The library preparation workflow is similar to regular whole genome sequencing, including random fragmentation and adapter ligation. A typical workflow for taxonomy analysis of shotgun metagenomic data includes quality trimming and comparison to a reference database comprising whole genomes or selected markers. Because shotgun metagenomic sequencing covers all genetic information in a sample, the data can be used for additional analyses such as metagenomic assembly and binning, metabolic function profiling, and antibiotic resistance gene profiling. As I mentioned earlier, there are many factors to consider when comparing these two sequencing strategies. These include your sample type and the coverage needed for bacteria. Do you need to profile species from all three taxonomic domains? Differences in false positive generation. Your desired taxonomic resolution. Concerns about host DNA interference and functional profiling. All right, let's start off with bacterial coverage. Taxonomy predictions heavily depend on the species coverage of available reference databases. Assembling entire reference genomes for metagenomic databases require a great deal of sequencing and computation. Because of this, the assembly of reference genomes has been focused on microbiomes derived from the human body. But since the 16S gene requires relatively very little sequencing to assemble, 16S databases contain many more bacterial species from all sorts of environments. So in terms of the potential bacteria to identify, 16S has the edge over shotgun. But 16S is limited to bacterial identification only, while shotgun is able to identify species from all three taxonomic domains. So if the detection of eukaryotes and archaea are important to your study, shotgun sequencing has the advantage. Moving on to false positive species calling. Again, the quality of shotgun databases play a critical role here. Unless there is a perfect representative genome in the reference database for a microbe sequenced, the bioinformatics analysis is likely to predict the existence of multiple closely related genomes. These closely related genomes can be from different species of the same or even a different genus. For example, assume there are three closely related microbes, A, B, and C, and they share some sequences in common, where species A shares some sequences only with B and some other sequences only with C. Now let's say a sample that we sequence contains species A but not B and C, but the reference database we are using contains genomes from B and C but not A. Unfortunately, the bioinformatics will incorrectly predict that both B and C are present. Such an occurrence can happen with horizontal gene transfers, which is common between closely related microbes. 16S sequencing, on the other hand, has the advantage of error correction tools such as DATA2. This tool was compared to the OTU-based CHIME version 1.9.0 using the defined composition of the Zymobiomics Microbial Community Standard 2. CHIME made nine false positive predictions, while the error correction of DATA2 called no false positives. All right, now let's discuss taxonomy resolution. 
Taxonomy resolution of 16S sequencing depends on the variable regions targeted, the organism itself, and the sequence analysis algorithm. In recent years, species level identification has been achieved with the help of error correction tools like Data2, improved primary designs, and curated databases. The Zymobiomics 16S sequencing service, for example, consistently achieves species level resolution. But in theory, Shotgun metagenomic sequencing can achieve strain level resolution since it can cover all genetic variations. This can be helpful for distinguishing between commensal and pathogenic strains of the same species. So shotgun metagenomic sequencing achieves higher resolution compared to 16S sequencing. If metabolic function analysis is a goal, most researchers will quickly overlook 16S sequencing. But there are some tools that can infer metabolic function from taxonomy data. PyTrust is one such program. But in general, shotgun metagenomic sequencing is often utilized when functional profiling is required because of the additional gene coverage. The presence of too much host DNA can cause nonspecific amplification in the library preparation process of 16S sequencing, but the impact is controllable by adjusting PCR cycles and optimizing primers. On the other hand, the interference of host DNA is a much more difficult problem for shotgun metagenomic sequencing. Depending on the sample type, some samples can contain over 99% host DNA, which not only increases sequence cost, but also introduces uncertainty to the measurement. This is why many researchers are interested in host DNA depletion before library prep. The host zero microbial DNA kit, for example, is capable of removing over 90% of host DNA. Here's an example of undepleted saliva with over 60% of reads wasted on human DNA. But with the host zero kit, almost 100% of reads are devoted to microbial species. All right, that's some of the points we've gone over. 16S sequencing is able to identify more bacterial species from a wider range of sample sources. Shotgun sequencing is capable of identifying species from all three taxonomic domains. 16S is much less risky in terms of false positives, but shotgun can achieve a higher taxonomic resolution. Shotgun sequencing can be affected by host DNA contamination, but there are host depletion methods available to help. The total gene coverage of shotgun enables metabolic function analysis. Now we didn't discuss the following points, but they're pretty straightforward. Since 16S library prep is PCR based, minimum input required is just 10 copies of the 16S gene. The lowest input required for a shotgun library prep is one nanogram of DNA, but this can be higher depending on the kit. A wide variety of environments represented in the 16S databases allow it to be useful for all the sample types, while shotgun metagenomic sequencing is best for human-derived samples. And finally, cost per sample. 16S sequencing can be performed for about $80 per sample, and since the cost of sequencing continues to drop, shotgun sequencing is now possible for just around $200 per sample. Each sequencing method has its strengths, and the choice between them is not simply a question of budget. Your sample type and study goals are major factors in the decision. At Zymo Research, we offer complete end-to-end -end sequencing services for shotgun metagenomics and 16S sequencing, as well as ITS and 18S. Additionally, the microbiomics experts at Zymo are happy to help with all steps of the microbiomics workflow. Please contact us with any questions you may have. Thank you very much.